and welcome to the Nightly Met. I'm Avery Anderson. So jumping right into our pack show today, first up is a poet, philosopher, songwriter, now an author. His first book, Moral Panic, a cyber crime novel, comes out this March. Here to join me is K.M. Eka. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, really good. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited about this project, Moral Panic. Yeah. Uh, it's my first novel, and I've been making music for like 10 years, yeah. but uh, a lot of the ideas that I was kind of working on through my music and in a lot of the poetry and some of the writing that I was doing, I, I, I felt like I needed a story to, to bring some of those out. And uh, this novel has been just a great experience. Yet you're a man of many talents. You do many things. So now that you're an author, tell us more about Moral Panic. What's, don't give any spoilers. Sure. But kind of give us a general overview of it. Well, so the title, A Moral Panic, is, is actually like a sociological term, which means uh, people are trying to stir up some type of moral outrage in order to decrease some type of civil liberties. And we see this happening kind of all over the place in, on, on a lot of the spectrum of, of the political mm -hmm. world right now. Uh, so that's, that's the title, but the, the actual story is, it's a technological thriller, and it follows Tanner Moore, who is the chief technology officer of, imagine a company where Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and all the technology world is basically just in one, one. in one company. Okay. And they they kind of uh, they're the backdrop of the whole story. But Tanner works for them, and he's he's creating a, de a drone delivery service for that company. Okay. And he he then gets fired and sent into this dark net underworld run by a vigilante secret police group that uses surveillance to hunt down uh, their enemies, basically. Okay. Do you think that this world in Moral Panic could ever become our world with all these groups merging together? I think if it's, it's a dark net surveillance nightmare. So it, it, I've taken some liberties in the, in the sense that like, I don't think that a group like this will ever actually exist. Um, I hope not, at least. Uh, I think that the world that I created within this specific story is is an extreme world. So I took, I took kind of the most extreme elements of of technology, politics, mm -hmm. and ideology, and tried to find the collision of those three points okay. within the story. Uh, the the company I don't think would happen, and then there's there's a lot of me media manipulation and technological manipulation that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, so if nothing else, if you're if you're interested in learning what's possible within like a, a political campaign to fake and and right. that type of stuff, especially like social media manipulation, uh, this book can can show can they give pull you the like curtain the worst back. Case scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Why write this book now? Is there any particular reason? I mean, you've done all this other stuff. Why did you choose to release it now? Well, I think surveillance has been an interesting topic uh, for dramatic for a dramatic setting for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've wanted to do something on just the surveillance world w without necessarily judging it too much to come into it because you know it, surveillance is a tool, T technology is a tool. These right. are these are things that people can use for either good or bad purposes. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to figure out what would what would be the worst possible usage of some of the surveillance tools that we have? And uh, a, lot of, a lot of the cliches in that type of world tend to be uh, you know, a, a corporate or a governmental type of an abuse. But within the scope of this story, I created a vigilante secret police that doesn't have the kind of bureaucratic roadblocks that a government or a, uh, a corporation would necessarily have. Okay. So before being an author, you've done a lot of other stuff. Uh, one of those being Denver Flow Media, correct? Uh, it's Dream Flow Media. Dream Flow Media. Dream. Dream Flow Media. I'm really struggling with words this morning. It's okay. Uh, so talk about Stream Flow Media. So Dream Flow Media. The Dream Flow is so Dream Flow Media is the company that I started a couple of years ago. Uh, I've been doing media production for a couple of years, just doing. I've worked on a couple of political campaigns and kind of promotional content for local bands and nonprofits for the most part. And uh, I'm transitioning it more into a publishing company right now. So uh, that's that's why I've 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 timed the release of the book and the album at the moment because it's kind of the adjustment into more of a a, a record label 
and a production studio. That's okay. that's what I want to turn it into eventually. Okay, it's kind so, of evolved since its beginning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you, and talk about the album more. So you are releasing this book and a musical album yes. all at the same time, pretty much. So, I mean, it's not like you have anything else to do. <laughs> well, I. It's been a it's been a, an interesting road to get here artistically. I mean, I've I've produced probably six total albums mm -hmm. of my own work. Uh, I'll be using some of the material from from those albums in upcoming releases, but this this specific album is lyrically the best content I've ever written. Okay, and it's it's certainly. I, the way I've been describing it is that it's it's truth attempting to fight cultural insanity. Hmm, interesting. Very cool. So now that you've written an out well several albums and a book, do you think we'll ever get Moral Panic the musical? It's possible. <laughs> um, I do want to turn it into a film or a TV show at some okay. point. So there's is this going to be a series or just a standalone book? I I really don't want to write a sequel. You know, like <laughs> I don't want to do that. Uh, but kind of the more that I've been thinking about it, I, I know how it would it would continue. I know okay. how the story would go on, uh, and so ideally, I would just uh, sell the concept to like a a production studio and say and this is this is where it goes. This is kind okay. of and then maybe stay on as a creative consultant oh. or something like that, but not necessarily. <sighs> I don't know if I want to stay in the world of darknet surveillance because it's it's like some of the days writing some of these these characters right. and and like really thinking into like thinking about some of the backstabbing and like the media manipulation that goes along in the book. Uh, it wasn't necessarily always fun to write. Yeah, a little bit of a dark place. Yeah, and when you're living in that world a whole lot, it's maybe not the funnest thing. Yeah, I mean, I I can remove myself from it. Right. But it's certainly, you know, it's, it's not all bubblegum and sunshine. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And Thanks everyone, be sure to check out um, both Moral Panic and your upcoming album, both being released very soon. All right, uh, stick around. We will be.